All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is our Q4 webinar. Uh, today we're gonna have a few presentations for you about how to succeed in Q4. I have some tips on PPC and managing your catalog. All of these other guys have some very interesting topics. I'll start by introducing myself, introducing everyone else here. Then each person is gonna present their topic. And at the end of all of this, we're gonna have a Q&A session where you can ask any of us um, any questions that are on your mind. So for me, I'm gonna start off uh, with preparing for Amazon's holiday season, last minute strategies to boost sales. And I also forgot to give my intro. My name is Safe. I'm the co-founder of AI Hello. We're an Amazon advanced partner and we offer PPC software for around 5,000 sellers right now. Next up, we have uh, Yasha. Did I say that right this time? Yasha. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Perfect. So can you introduce yourself on your topic, please? Yes, sure. So um, my name is Yasha. Um, uh, today's topic is going to be uh, cost-efficient Amazon PPC strategies for small to mid-sized uh, size brands. Um, yeah, and I'm CEO of uh, Amazonic Agency. Perfect. Elizabeth? Hey, uh, my name is Elizabeth Gearing, co-founder Amazon Ad Agency, which is why I hopefully have something insightful to share on this topic. Um, we're going to be talking about how to drive record-breaking sales without having to sacrifice profits during Q4. So basically, how do you balance sales growth and profitability? It's a tall order, but I got some tactics. Perfect. Next up is Javier. Can you give us an intro? Yeah, my name is Javier Dominguez. I'm CEO of Pareco Global, a marketplace in Amazon specialist consulting agency since 10 years ago. And I'm going to share some insights for Q4 based on our experience and provide some little examples and tips for for boosting this this quarter. Perfect. And lastly, we have Trevor. Hi, I'm Trevor. I'm um, founder of Vendlove.com. Um, we are a direct-to-consumer um, agency specializing in Amazon. Um, I'm going to share uh, tips from my experience of running, camp uh, getting the most out of your ads in Q4. Right, perfect. So I'm going first. Uh, I have almost a checklist for you guys on things that you might want to look at or consider before the holiday season comes. Uh, so before like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas season, uh, you guys want to make sure that everything I'm going to show you today is sorted, uh, just so you guys have the best shot at hitting your sales target. So I'm just going to pop screen share open right now. If you guys give me a moment, please. Okay, right, here we go. Okay. Share screen. Window. Okay. Right, perfect. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. Let me just pop present mode open. Okay, perfect. Uh, so first slide is how to crush Q4. Um, I'll show you guys every single thing that we're looking at. This is kind of a bird's eye view, so I don't really have details for you, but this is everything that you want to consider um, at a high level. Obviously, if you want to go more in depth and actually go into the weeds with this, there are more things that you can look at. But this is at minimum what all of you guys need to be doing um, before the holiday season kicks in. So the first thing is the prep work. So this isn't strictly PPC, but you want to solve three things, catalog, uh, listings, and inventory. Um, catalog basically means solving any catalog issues that you have before the holiday season comes. So if you guys are dealing with listing suppressions, because maybe you're missing some paperwork or your listing has been suspended for any reason, you want to make sure that that's fixed before the holiday season comes, especially if that's like a major product for you guys. If you have advertising suppressions, you want to fix that. If you have buy box issues, maybe because of your pricing or because of something else, you want to see if you can get that sorted. If you have issues with just the way the products are presented. So maybe you're, uh, I just had a client, they have like a main parent ASIN that's driving like 40, 50% of their sales. Amazon decided to split all of our variations. Obviously sales didn't do as well after that. And uh, you want to try to get all of that solved before the holiday season kicks in because you want to have everything set up and everything correct so that when the additional traffic and the additional purchase intent kick in, you guys are set up to make more money, right? So catalog is the first thing you want to deal with. Uh, if you have your, your own internal team, that's fine. You can also hire a catalog specialist full-time for like a, a thousand or a couple thousand a month. There are other agencies as well, like Seller Candy, for example, that can help you with these things. But you should give yourself at least a month. I know probably it's too late right now to say this, but at least a month in advance 
uh, to try to get some of these sorted because some of these could even take more than a month if you're unlucky. Uh, the second thing is inventory. Uh, so the last thing you want to do is stock out because if you're out of stock, you're selling nothing. Uh, and you're also going to have longer term issues because of that period of time where you did stock out. So you want to look at your current inventory and you want to look at the previous years to try to predict what the sales lift for each of these holiday or sales periods that we're going to go through will be like. Then you have to make sure that you have enough uh, enough units in stock to get you through the rest of the year, right? And you want to have a margin above what you predict you're going to sell. So if you think you're going to sell 500, you want to have more than 500 just in case you end up getting more sales or you know something happens or you did your math wrong. You want to get caught with no inventory. Right. Uh, you want to try to send everything in as soon as possible because you can't really do last minute deliveries at this point. Uh, especially if like you're in the like, depth of Q4 with all of the actual like sales um or like discounts and like holiday periods happening, it's gonna be very difficult to get the inventory in Amazon on time. So you wanna have everything set up beforehand because again, if you have no inventory, you're not selling, so you're gonna miss out on you know any potential sales you'd make, and you're also gonna lead uh, sorry, you're also gonna deal with some longer term impacts. Uh, because you did go out of stock. Finally, you want to optimize your content. So you want to make sure you have the best images, the best titles. Uh, if you have any missing content pieces, like you don't have as many images as you should, you don't have A plus content up, you don't have your uh, you know brand store up, you don't have everything set up properly. Now is the time to get that done. If you want to do some split tests, now also is the time to get that done. So if you have the best variation of your listing content going into Q4, if you handle all three of these things, you're going to put yourself at a much um, better position and you give yourself much better like chances to actually succeed in Q4. So this is all stuff that you really need to look at and stuff that you should have hopefully started working on uh, maybe a month or two ago, right? After that, I have some PPC advice. This is more of a checklist than anything. So I'm just going to take you through each bullet point and explain in more detail uh, what specifically I mean. Um, so the first one is rank on keywords beforehand. So obviously advertising is very expensive. During some periods of Q4, you know, CPCs can go up. Traffic is also up. So, you know, higher CPCs, more clicks, you guys are going to end up spending more money. A smart thing to do would be to try to rank on important keywords beforehand. So if you can start investing more in ranking campaigns, and obviously these do have to be keywords that convert for you and keywords that work, keywords that are relevant to your products that you actually have a chance at ranking and keywords that are frankly just like realistic for you to rank on. Because if it's something that's unrealistic, no matter how much you spend, you're not really, really going to get that far. So you want to make sure that the most important keywords are being invested into uh, beforehand. And by the time like the main holiday periods hit, or if you have some certain like seasonality going on with Halloween, which is I think a week from now, uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, before any of that stuff happens, you're already ranked um, sufficiently high on your main keywords so that you can get enough organic sales. Uh, the second thing I like to do is try to retarget all of the page viewers and previous customers who didn't buy from me before. Uh, so if I have people who um, like saw my listings maybe a couple of weeks back and they didn't buy, now with the whole discount running, maybe that kind of incentivizes them to buy. So I do see a lot of people who didn't buy earlier start to purchase uh, once the actual discount comes and once it's like the holiday period and everyone's shopping. Uh, so it's a good chance to convert some of these people. You can also convert previous customers. So if you had someone buy from you before, you can try to cross sell them or upsell them another product. Or if you sell a replenishable, you can try to get them to re-engage and buy a new um, unit from you. Uh, so this is a good time to retarget, especially if you're going into like a season where you're going to have discounts up. Um, for number three, we have enable all of the ads and keywords for seasonal products. So sometimes this is missed. But again, like obviously, if you have certain products that only really sell well during Halloween, Christmas, or Thanksgiving, you want to make sure everything's enabled for them. All the budgets are set up properly. All of the bids are set up properly. So that when the actual like season comes, uh, you guys are spending and selling from day one. You know, I have like a one or two day period where everything's off and you don't notice. Uh, number four is you want to make sure that you have all the relevant keywords covered, the ad types and the match types. If you have previous data showing that a certain you know targeting type doesn't work for you or a certain ad type isn't that effective for you, you don't have to spend on it unnecessarily. But if it's something that you've never tested, you want to maybe get those campaigns, those keywords, those match types, or those targeting types up before Q4, collect data on them. And if it works well, you want to be investing in those as well. 
uh, during Q4 because you really want to get as much coverage as possible to make most the most out of Q4 as you can. Uh, for the final point on this first page, uh, you want to plan out a per ASIN budget. So unless you guys have infinite money, uh, you're going to want to have a rough idea of how you're going to divide your ad spend between some of your products. So you do need to make sure that the main products remain the main products um, in terms of like budget. So you want to make sure that a certain percentage of your budget is allocated toward those. And you can do this with either a PPC software or just like budget uh, work on Amazon with portfolios or campaign level budgets. And uh, that can ensure that you're spending sufficiently on those products. Uh, on the next page, I'm going to have a point about account level and portfolio level budgets as well. But you want to make sure that the main ASINs always have enough money to spend and that you don't have ASINs that I guess aren't doing super well or just got like a spike in traffic during this part of the year, but in general aren't even performing well with that spike in traffic. You don't want to have those ASINs spend too much of your budget and to overshadow your main ASINs, right? Uh, for part two, you want to make sure all of the budgets are set up properly. Uh, so with the last Prime Day, uh, I ran into a few setters who had like an account level budget set up and it was like $50 a day. They were smaller setters. And, you know, Prime Day passed and they're like, hey, why didn't I see increased sales? And it's because like their account level budget stopped them from spending as much as they could have. So the increased traffic and all that stuff didn't really translate into any additional clicks or sales, at least with the ads. So you want to make sure account level budgets make sense. Uh, you want to make sure campaign level budgets make sense. So if you have super tight campaign level budgets or your campaigns are already going out of budget, you want to clear that. Uh, and increase your budgets beforehand so that you don't run into issues with all of the campaigns uh, being pretty much, um, you know, not paused, but pretty much non-spending for the second half of the day. This is something that you want to clear out beforehand. Uh, and also portfolio level budgets. A lot of people have monthly budgets on the portfolio level and those monthly budgets might already be tight. And then with the sales periods and all of the holidays and everything, they end up running through that budget um, a lot sooner than the end of the month. And they're stuck spending nothing for the rest of the month. So if you can increase the portfolio level budget, do that. If you have some restrictions around that, then you generally want to make sure that you leave enough of that monthly budget for the actual like high concentration sales periods. So you're not timing out of your budget too early. Uh, finally, you want to set up good product targeting. Um, you know, a lot of people are shopping around and they're cross-checking different products. So you want to make sure that you're targeting some products in your category, especially if you have a price or a review advantage, or even like a feature slash design advantage on some of these other products. So you wanna make sure you're showing up there as well. I see a lot of sellers like under utilizing product targeting, especially during these sales periods. Uh, I want you to also negate any wasteful search terms. So as you know, search volume is going up during Q4. Uh, so a lot of search terms that maybe were wasteful, but were not spending that much earlier are gonna have more searches and more clicks happening. And if those are not negated, you're going to find yourself spending a lot more money on some of these search terms and in total, maybe wasting thousands of dollars, depending on the size of your account. So it's good to have those negated beforehand. And, you know, if you have irrelevant search terms in one campaign, you can negate them across multiple campaigns as well for the same ASIN to make sure you're not going to show up for those search terms during Q4 and spend like a boatload of money because the search volumes are up, right? So you want to make sure that's done. Uh, you also want to keep watching your ads throughout the day. Uh, and to make uh, necessary changes, right? So if you're timing out of your budget throughout the day, you want to fix that. Uh, you know, if there are issues with bids, uh, campaigns, anything that you've missed during setup, you want to be watching throughout the day, you know, at least every hour uh, for the, you know, highest volume part of the day to make sure everything's going right. Finally, I also want you guys to make sure your PPC software is set up right. Uh, so a lot of you guys, maybe if you're using AI or rule-based, uh, might have the wrong settings in. Uh, might have a software that's only able to look back retrospectively and just makes, you know, wrong or incorrect bid changes uh, in your most important sales days. So you want to speak to whoever's working with you, maybe like your customer success manager, figure out what their take on this is, and then to make sure that everything's set up right beforehand, because you don't want to be working in one direction and having your PPC software work in another direction. And this is also true um, post sales period, right? So you need to set up your PPC software, right? or at least know beforehand how it's going to act once the actual sales period is over. Because obviously you're going to see a drop in, you know, conversion rates, a drop in volume, a drop in CPCs and other metrics. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. 
uh, for the last couple slides, uh, I don't have any more information. I just have some motivation uh, from last year's Q4. Uh, so over here, we have a seller 1.6 million almost. That I don't remember what percentage ACOS this would be, but it looks like 6%. If my math is wrong, let me know. And we have another guy who did 1.2 million at 19%. So this isn't going to be all of you, but a lot of you guys are going to have a really good Q4. And I hope these tips were useful. Thank you. Just and share. Perfect. So up next we have, let me just check the schedule, uh, is uh, Yasha. So Yasha, can you go next? Yes. All right. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right, one second. All right. Can you see my presentation? All right. Yes. All right. So let me just re reintroduce myself real quick. Um, my name is Yasha. I started selling on Amazon in 2013 with my own supplement brand selling superfoods at that time, which were super popular. Um, I've learned that selling products for $5 uh, is not profitable. I've also learned, learned that FBA fees exist. Um, after that, I've uh, um, led uh, Amazon team for brands in supplement categories. I founded Amazoniac agency in 2016. I've helped numerous brands uh, we're selling on Amazon along the way, and currently we are expanding Amazonia agency to full service agency with a strong focus on a global expansion, which is super popular right now. Um, and today I want to talk about tactics that can drive cost efficient growth in Q4. So um, I'll be focusing on two, the two tactics. One is strategic budget allocation, and the other one is precision keyword and ASIN targeting. Um, both are um, both are tactics for uh, smaller uh, smaller accounts, smaller sellers, or to mid-sized sellers. So mainly those who cannot uh, afford a huge huge budget. Um, first, I just wanted to to go through Q4 overview real quick. So we all know that we can expect higher traffic um, in Q4. The, the traffic is huge. The the demand is huge. Everybody's looking for for products and discounts. There is intense competition on Amazon. We already see a huge competition, but yeah, Q4 is a whole nother level. Um, smaller brands often have budget constraints, which are a big pain in the butt. And managing inventory is also one big pain in the butt, um, especially forecasting is already difficult and having enough inventory on time in Amazon warehouses is yeah another, another issue. So yeah, high uh, ROI, is this even possible? This is the big question. So um, let me just share uh, two of our um, last year's accounts. One, just, just to have an, an overview, how does the um, Q4 period even look like? Uh, so this is Q4 for one of the account, uh, uh, our accounts last year. We can see a small spike in Prime Day in October and huge spike in Black Friday period. And then inventory went out of stock, which was, yeah, huge issue. And again, a small spike in, in, in pre-Christmas period, which is the, the Black Friday period here was something that practically every brand is really, really uh, looking for, um, minus the inventory issues, of course. But oftentimes um, we see that the reality is something more like this. So this is the view of another account. Um, for the whole year, we see big spikes in Prime Days, and then Black Friday comes because during the Prime Day, you, the the, the uh, sellers often think, "Oh my God, these sales were so big. Black Friday is going to be even better." But yeah, the reality hits. It's not. Uh, it's not necessarily that great. When you combine all the numbers, yeah, it may be okay. But at the end, when you look at the, the spend, the numbers, um, the profits, yeah, the situation is often not that great. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we're going to look into two tactics to avoid such situations that, that at the end of the year, um, you wouldn't have any money left. 
and one of the strategies uh, or tactics is uh, budget allocation. So basically what that means is optimizing budget based on historic, historical data and performance and uh, use, use historical data to strategically allocate budget based on product and campaigns with the highest potential ROI. Um, so what that really means is you allocate budgets proportionally based on sales history and profitability during Q4 last year. Um, you already get some data from last year's uh, from last year's campaigns, uh, last year's sales, and you just take those data and use it in the current year again. If you have if you have a new account or if you weren't selling last year, you can use data from I don't know Prime Day for example this year or maybe some other pro promotional period that you were running this year. Um, basically anything that can help you, any any data that that can help you. Um, Allocate budgets um, in a, in a, in a, in a good way. Uh, next thing is prioritize campaigns with consistently lower ACOS and better conversion rates. So uh, the important thing is that you consider lower uh, campaigns with lower ACOS and better conversion conversion rates. Not only one of those um, uh, of uh, KPIs. Both need to be taken into the account uh, because both are important in terms of um, performance and and we are looking for campaigns and uh, campaigns that are um, uh, that are uh, performing really really well so not only average campaigns or below average definitely not it's something that is performing really above average and also consider shifting a higher percentage to sponsor products the reason uh, behind this is Simple sponsor product campaigns are still the cheapest ones on on more or less um, uh, on Amazon, and with smaller budgets, it just it just makes more sense to to, to focus on these uh, sort of campaigns. Then is there is also day parting approach. With day parting, um, this is something that uh, it's usually available if you're using some sort of uh, PPC software. If you do. Um, it's a great way to, uh, to to use it. So basically what this means is use historical hourly and daily sales data uh, where you identify peak times and just allocate higher budgets um, to those peak, peak periods and you uh, lower budgets on the periods that uh, don't perform that well. Uh, I want to share one of the, um, the um, one of our clients, uh, campaigns before we, we uh, deep dive into them. So on the left side, you see ad spend and ad performance. Ad spend was, uh, so towards sponsor products around 88% and seven and 4% went to sponsor brands and display. And ad performance was for sponsor brands and display, ACOS was around 70% between 60 and 80%. And sponsor product uh, was also over 40% uh, ACOS. These are not numbers that uh, anybody would be really proud of. Um, so when we uh, shifted those, those budgets for the last year's Q4, uh, we shifted budgets, we, we uh, take a look and into the conversion rates, uh, campaign performance, and basically focus our spend to, towards more towards foreign products because budget constraints were, were really um, pretty, pretty big here. Um, we decided that we will go really, really uh, with small display and sponsor brands campaigns, and yeah, focus just on sponsor products. As you can see, ninety-seven percent um, of the budget went towards this type of the campaign, and performance after that also drastically improved. Um, basically, everything was uh, all campaigns were doing uh, somewhere between thirty and forty percent ACOS, and total ACOS was naturally even um, even better. So just for your uh, view, this is also how um, how, how the um, day parking looks like, uh, where you can where you can set for each hour of the day uh, based on some historic data, uh, the performance, and you can set the budget allocation. I've marked in red in red the uh, the hours of the day. Uh, where we have lowered the the, um, the budget and bids, and in green where we've seen some good performance with low ACOS, good conversion rates, 
Um, and this is some something that um, parts of the day where we can increase budgets and invest more heavily um, with, uh, of course, um, better potential um, sales and also profits. Well, maybe just two tips. So you can set daily alerts. So uh, just to um, to have some uh, alerts for high priority campaigns to avoid overspending. So this is definitely something that you want to avoid. You don't want to spend too much money either. Uh, if you have a budget for the whole Q4, you don't want to spend all the budget in in October already, or if you or you don't want to spend uh, all the budget uh, uh, per day. So you don't want to be out of budget by noon already, when the uh, main sales period of the day is not even there yet. Um, another thing is to have weekly budget adjustment based on ongoing performance, especially in the high traffic weeks. That means Halloween and uh, even more Black Friday and pre Christmas period. So from Black Friday to Cyber Monday and pre Christmas period, this is by far the highest. Um, these are the most the highest traffic weeks, and you definitely want to uh, watch out what is happening with your budgets and with your um, uh, sales. So the next the next tactic is uh, fine tuning keyword and product targeting for high ROI. That basically means um, to utilize uh, search term reports. You have ninety days of report data to identify high performing keywords, and you all, you can also find keywords which you can negate in your campaigns. Um, you can also target long tail keywords with specific holiday intent. This is also one of the things that I would recommend with caution. Um, and then there is also uh, ASIN targeting. So you can target complementary or competitive ASINs to capture more intent-driven customers. Um, this is something that works really, really well, uh, especially if you already have some historical data. I, I'm pretty sure that um, everyone can find some very well-performing ASINs, uh, competitor ASINs or complementary ASINs, and make sure that you bid aggressively on those ASINs. High converting ASINs can be a gold mine. Uh, and as I mentioned a little bit before, seasonal keywords, you can create campaigns around specific Q4 search trends like gifts for that, for example. But uh, just beware, be cautious about, about this too, uh, because these sort of keywords can be super expensive. So try with long tail keywords um, if you can define some, uh, and this can work really, really well at the end. Exact match for high intent keywords. This is also something uh, super important. So focus on exact match, uh, especially with proven high converting keywords. Uh, exact exact match keywords can be really really profitable, um, and can put not only uh, not only profitability, but they can also help you with uh, with your ranking a lot. Uh, don't forget, of course, on broad match. But yeah, focus is on exact match, especially for those high converting keywords. This should be the focus in, especially in Q4. And don't forget to negate keywords that don't make sense. So keywords that are not making uh, any sales, that are, that are spending, that are not, uh, that don't have enough or high uh, conversion rate or uh, that have too, too big A cost, negate those keywords. Same story with ASINs, negate ASINs that don't make sense for your account. So key takeaways, budget allocation using historical data. Uh, make sure um, to, to go into search reports. Uh, if, you have, if you use some PPC software or maybe some, some other ways of, uh, of uh, reporting, uh, I'm sure you also have longer periods of, uh, of data there. So make sure to utilize the information that you find there. Um, use precision keyword targeting, async targeting. So with, with um, exact matches, focus on sponsored products, um, mainly on sponsored products. If you see that some other campaign times, uh, types work really well for you, utilize also these sort of campaigns. But sponsored products, as I said, are usually um, the, the high converting ones. Don't forget also to take a deep look into your sales data, refine your PPC strategies. Uh, don't forget to do this daily, weekly. Q4 is super important period. And uh, yeah, make sure you have everything under control. 
that's it from me. Connect with me. You can send me an email. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or you can visit our website. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, next up, we have Elizabeth Green. You're on mute, by the way, Elizabeth. I don't know if you're saying anything. Nothing of importance, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Is that good? Yes, I can see everything. Okay, sweet. So, hey, uh, that was really good. I appreciate all the, I'm, my goal here is to also share some tactics. So I'm probably going to be going over a couple of the points because they were very good points uh, made in the other presentations. Um, my goal here is to give you some tactics to be able to drive record-breaking sales. Again, goal here in Q4 is although there's immense opportunity in terms of increases in traffic, there's also seems like a thousand different ways where we could end up at the end of the day, not even making any profits, unfortunately, sometimes losing them. Um, advertising costs being a big portion of that. So again, we're going to get into some tactical ways that you can avoid that. It's a tall order, but I think I can deliver on it. All right. Um, so Q4, the deal uh, here and why it's such a great opportunity is because there's this surge of traffic and that traffic converts. So with that, uh, this can either be a, a huge opportunity or it can feel very, very risky because as we previous um, presenters were talking about like, hey, do you do you know which products you're focusing in on? Do you know where that traffic is going to hit? What we want to do is make sure that we are capitalizing on that traffic. So here's the tactics. Um, I don't recommend going straight into ad console and saying what's working. These are the two steps that we use to identify what we're going to focus in on. And then again, we're going to get tactical in terms of ads on how you can figure out what's working in the advertising as well. Um, but step one is to figure out which products that you're focusing in on. Now, there's two buckets that these products are going to fall into. There's an easy bucket, which is the one that you've been selling for multiple years. And so you can know, hey, this is what it did past Q4. This is kind of the lift I can expect. I already know that these are my core products because there will be some products where Q4 Although everyone talks about Q4 being amazing, it might not be your best season. So if you have data to know where that traffic is going to hit, um, that's a lot easier. The second one and the harder one, but I do have a pro tip for you, is going to be products where you don't have any Q4 sales history. So you're assuming something is going to increase. You don't really know. Uh, so the products that you should focus in on, what you want to do is you want to look at, again, we're using historical data trends inside of the business report. So you want to check for two things. You want to check for growth in terms of traffic, but you also want to check for growth in terms of your conversion rates. Ideally, you have products where both of those hit, but you want to identify like, well, is that sales increase happening because I'm just getting more traffic? I'm not necessarily converting better. Or do I have very strong conversion rates, which means I could probably push a little bit more aggressively because I know I'm going to convert off of, say, less clicks. Again, when we get into the advertising. The other thing you want to do is you want to check on two levels. You want to check both the business reports um, for the parent acing, which is essentially a listing level. And then you also want to check for the child ASIN level as well. So again, you can know what listings to focus on and then which child variations inside of those listings. It's going to look like this. So there's the detailed page sales and traffic by parent item. And then you can check by a child on them as well. These data points go back two years worth of data. So you can go back and check um, again what happened last year and then compare that to years prior as well. All right, this is the hard one. If you have no idea how this product can, performs in Q4. So you're not going to be able to get conversion rate data, but you can get traffic data, i.e. demand for these products during Q4. Fantabulous way to do this. There's other keyword research tools that will also show you search volume over time. I just have screenshots of Helium 10. What you want to do is go through and look at the top keywords for this particular product. And this is, again, screenshot inside of Helium 10. So if you're using either Cerebro or or uh, their magnet tool, which are both the keyword research tools, you can select this little icon, which is going to pop open this. You want to select here on this date range. You're going to be looking at all time. And what you want to see is, are there traffic increases or search increases for the main keywords for this product? 
that identifies, hey, at least you have demand that should be coming in for these products. And then you can plan accordingly for that. Or if maybe your products aren't as in demand as you thought during Q4, you can also sort of prep yourself for that so you don't end up overspending. So that's how you figure out how the products were, what products to focus in on. But then the second question is, all right, what do we do with the ads? So the trick and the key to not absolutely losing your shirt when it comes to your advertising inside of Q4 is balancing these two things. And again, we're going to get tactical here, but in a nutshell, what you want to do is make sure that your ad spend is balanced with your total sales. This means if your total sales are increasing, because again, more traffic, better conversions, we can afford to spend more on our advertising because total A cost is ad spend divided by total sales. If one of those numbers goes up, the other number can go up. The problem and where you end up losing is when your ad spend increases outpace the growth that you have for total sales because it costs more for the clicks or you're getting more clicks from the traffic. So we're going to get tactical on how do you balance these two things and how do you go about running strategic ads again so we're not wasting money. All right. What you want to do is you want to focus in when you are electing to increase or get more aggressive on things. We're going to be looking at the stuff that we know worked. Again, we already know the products that we're focusing in on. One of the most difficult things is to figure out, okay, now I know what products to focus on. Where the heck am I advertising these products? You know, you told me I need to increase the campaign, you know, what I'm already advertising on. How do I find it? Here's how you find it. This is the product tab. We're going to be revisiting this a couple of times. There's some phenomenal resources inside of this tool. But what you're going to do is go into the ad console. You're going to go to the product tab and you can actually search for specific ASINs. And what you can do is this little arrow drop down here. If you click this, it's actually going to pop open every single campaign that this product is being advertised in with the performance data. So not only can you look at that, you can actually sort by sales and saying, hey, where are most of the sales coming from my advertising for this one specific product? So we're going to get tactical and then we're going to talk in general terms, but this is going to give you not only just the products, but then mirroring it into what campaigns should I be focusing on for these specific products? All right. When it comes to ad spent, goal here is to maximize what is already working. Q4 is the most expensive time to run aggressive testing. More clicks happening, higher cost per clicks. If you don't know how something's going to convert, it's very, very easy to lose money. I'm not saying doing no tests. I'm saying being very, very careful with what you're testing. So goal here is to focus in on performing keywords. What we've found over the years is that really trying to force something that doesn't necessarily work to work, i.e. like giftable keywords or holiday keywords. Now, if you have a holiday product or you have a product that already performs well in giftable keywords, by all means, double down right? We already know those things work. We want to maximize them. But if your product historically has like never converted for gettable keywords, trying to force that to work is basically a recipe for disaster is what we found. So you want to focus in on, again, the keywords that you know worked. Use bid increases strategically. I'm going to give you some tactics at the end of that about like how to think about doing this strategically. So again, you can maximize orders without maximizing waste. But what we found is that focusing mostly on budget increases can be very helpful. So budgets help you capture more traffic. Bid increases will increase what you're paying per click. Now, again, bid increases will help you show up higher in search. So if your bid is no longer competitive, means you're not showing up in search, absolutely maximize bid increases. But if you're already showing high in search, what we found is that it oftentimes can just, again, increase what you're spending. So you need to make sure those things are balanced out. Another great tip here is to leverage broad match auto campaigns, category targeting. Goal here is to capture low cost, long tail traffic. So long tail keywords tend to have a greater search volume during Q4. More people shopping mean more people typing. So you end up with a lot of variations. However, I do want to give you a pro tip here. I would avoid overly high bids on broader targeting. Uh, that, again, 
a lot of clicks can happen through those broader targeting types. And the goal here is a low cost traffic. If we set aggressive bids for these ad types, it's no longer low cost traffic. We're kind of losing out on that strategy. So I would be careful. Again, I'm not saying don't increase them. I'm saying be very strategic, be very cautious. Other things you can do for the campaigns you have identified in the previous step would be like leveraging placements to capture a higher converting traffic. Where do you convert best? Make sure you're maximizing that. And then also analyzing uh, campaign bidding strategies. So if you have a dynamic up and down bidding, make sure you're watching it. Um, those can run out of control very, very quickly during Q4. There's some things that work off season that as soon as the traffic hits, doesn't work so well. So you want to make sure you're on top of that. All right, so that was how do you maximize that? But in going into balancing ad spend with total sales increases, the other way that you can balance ad spend is making sure that you're not overspending on the things that don't work. Now, I'm assuming with this that you're going through your good best practices in terms of optimization. Should be doing regular bid adjustments. You should be regularly adding negative keywords. What I want to show you is some very specific tactics on all of these things that nobody ever thinks about that like will sneak up and bite you if you're not paying attention to them. So this is not like an exhaustive list. This is the hint pro tip. These are all the things that everybody forgets about. And so I don't want these to come up and bite you in your account. So let's get into it. And I got screenshots. All right, so got a couple of these. The first one is going to be cut zero order keywords. Now, again, you should be going through and doing optimizations in your account, but are you looking at lifetime? What is never converted for your products? So targeting tab is going to be our best friend here. One of my favorite updates to the ad console to date. And what you can do is go into the targeting tab. You want to filter for campaigns that are enabled targets that are enabled, so only stuff that's active. You're going to filter from orders equals zero, so zero orders and greater than zero impressions. And then you want to sort by clicks here. And I would look at lifetime. You might also want to check the last 30 to 90 days as well. Again, sorting by this, clicks is going to bring to the top all the stuff that is getting a heck ton of clicks and is not converting. Why are we spending money on it, especially when cost per clicks are increased? So you want to make sure that that is cleared out of your account. So that's a basic one. Let's get more advanced. Here's another one that will absolutely reach up and bite you if you're not paying attention. This is going to be the things that have high bids that are like sleepers in your account. Maybe it's because there isn't a lot of search volume on the long tail for whatever reason. It's not really getting the traffic, but yet your bids, because you've been doing the regular optimizations of zero impressions, increased bid, low impressions, increased bid. If you don't have some sort of cap and fail safe, um, you, I have often been quite surprised at how high certain bids are set in the account. So again, we're going into our ad account. We're going to select targeting tab, campaigns and targets are enabled. And then we're going to go things with zero orders. And then we're going to sort here by bid. This is going to show us where do we have crazy high bids on something that has not converted for us. Here you can see we have like a $5 cap in this account. So we're never going to increase the bid past the $5. So we do have caps and fail safes in our bid optimization. If you don't, I've actually seen things with like $27 bids, $30 bids. You would be absolutely aghast sometimes. This is just a good check, but more like you really want to make sure you're checking this before the traffic hits. Another thing, completely slips over the radar. Oftentimes, if you have a, your regular optimizations, you say, okay, if it's above whatever it costs, let me just go through and just do like a small incremental lowering. These are the things that are absolutely burning money in your account. They do have orders, but they don't have a high impact on orders. Again, we're going to get to how do you think about increases and decreases in a way that's not going to like completely cut your sales off. Um, but this is one thing you want to check. So go into the targeting tab. Again, enabled campaigns, enabled targets. You're going to do orders less than or equal to two. You want to do advertising uh, cost of sale greater than or equal to 100. And then you want to sort here by clicks. These are all of the things. Notice here we have like 165 clicks with two orders on a lifetime value of 100 and something a cost. 
these are getting orders for us. Now you can see here, the bids have been optimized. So we're looking at 15 cent bids, 17 cent bids. So you want to significantly decrease. These are the things that you're kind of still holding on to because they are kind of sort of generating sales. But one to two orders, especially when you have accounts where the order volumes on certain keywords are above 20, you don't need to hold on to these one and two orders that are absolutely bleeding money. So you need to make sure these are optimized. And then the last one, again, a sleeper. I can't tell you how many accounts I've audited where this is like absolutely glaring in the face. You want to go through and you want to pause product variations. So here we're talking prior child variations where those variations are not converting. It's exactly like clicks with no sale keywords, except not as many people are aware of it. Here, product targeting our product tab is your friend. You want to go to a products tab. You want to filter by orders equals zero. And then again, we're sorting by clicks. These are immediately, you get to see all of the child ASINs in your account that are getting a ton of clicks and are not converting to an order. Again, you can use that little arrow drop down to figure out where these are being advertised, which campaigns, which ad groups have the most spend in them. And then you can go down into those ad groups. Again, you can look at things that are enabled, Orders greater than the zero, sorting by clicks. Where should we be pausing variations that are not leading to good performance? Get rid of them. All right. So that was the tactics of what to maximize. Um, but how do you keep on top of that? Because things move quickly in Q4. They move lightning speed. And what we find is that if you are not keeping an eye on things, they can spin out of control very, very fast. Now, in our agency, we have a policy. We check every single ad account daily. Um, and I'm going to give you some quick metrics to check. It's not that you necessarily have to do optimizations daily, because depending on how much ad spend you have, that might be overkill. But you, at the very least, want to know what's going on. You don't want to only check something weekly. You go in a week, be like, oh my gosh, I just spent, I had double the spend in the last four days and nobody was paying attention. So I wasted all that money. You want to find it as soon as you see the trends. So here's what we check. Again, these are spot checks. This is not a deep dive, what's going on, analytics, go fix it. That comes afterwards, but you want just a quick spot check monitor. So here's what I would check. You want to see how our total sales trending? Did total sales all of a sudden take a nosedive? You'll want to know about it, ASAP. Um, you want to look at ad spend. Again, ad spend significant increase. Or did you make an optimization and ad spend got cut in half, i.e. your traffic got cut in half? You want to know about it. Uh, you want to look at things like ad sales. Again, are we trending up and down? Um, a cost and total A cost. You can look at way more than this, but this is just like, again, a quick spot check is anything on fire? If it's on fire, let's move to the next step. If not, I can do my business as usual optimizations. But what do you do if something's on fire? Here's where so many people trip themselves up. Is they're like, okay, I have my plan. It's going according to plan. I know what I should be investing in. And so you make a change. And then all of a sudden something, total sales take a nosedive. A cost spikes, total A cost spikes. Spend goes through the roof. You're doing your daily checks. You catch something and then you freak out and you're like, okay, so what do I what do? I do? Like the, the general guidelines don't apply anymore. I know I need to make a change, but I don't know what I need to do. And oftentimes, and this is the wrong way to go about it, is they'll go in and say, what is spending the most? So if there was a spend increase, what's spending the most? And let me just cut it off. That's the worst thing to do. That is what, that is the, if you blindly optimize based on spend, guarantee you do that enough, you will wake up the next day with sales cut in half. That's why everyone is so afraid of Q4 because they're like, hey, I know I need to push, but when I pull back, I see my sales drop. So I feel like I'm on this tightrope of, I can't, you know, darned if you do, darned if you don't. Here's how you get around that. So you want to always work backwards from sales. Whenever you're making any optimization, this is the key to not having large fluctuations and also not absolutely cutting your sales off at the knees when it comes to cutting, you know, trying to eliminate ad spend. When you are increasing, so going back to those, we know what products, we know what campaigns, and when we're going through on increasing, we're going to work backwards from the things that have the best performance, typically it means low A cost, and high orders. So anything that is performing really well, 
driving a heck ton of sales, those are the things that we increase the most. Anything that has only a couple orders, really high A costs, this is going to be relative to your account. So for some accounts, high amount of orders is going to be like four. For other accounts, high amount of orders is going to be 35. It's very, very relative. On the accounts where you have like nothing working, one order is great, right? So it, it's all relative. Um, and then when you're going to de decreasing things, again, we're working backwards, but in the opposite direction. So when you're decreasing, you want to look at anything that has high spend and zero orders. So you're you're essentially protecting. We are protecting the things that are driving orders from us. Where I've seen things go wrong is they say, oh, X A cost. I'm not even taking into account orders. I'm not taking into account the impact on sales. You want to factor in the impact on sales when you're making optimization so you don't overly, this will stop you from aggressively doing something that's going to really hurt your account. So again, you're going to be more careful with the things when you're optimizing down, if they have a high impact on orders. And when you're pushing upwards, you're going to go with the more certainty or the ones that have the most orders. All right. And that's it. So again, these tactics are going to help you make Q4 the most profitable season yet. So again, goal here with all of these tactics is balancing your ad spend with your total sales volume. If those things are in line, you will have a profitable Q4. And with that, if you still need help, you're like, that sounds awesome. I don't know how to do it. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to do an audit on your account and walk you through it. All right. Thank you so much. This was great. Um, next up, we have Javier. Yeah. Do you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Well, great. I'm going to share now my, my screen. Do you see now my screen? Yep. Okay, great. I'm gonna to try to add additional value for um, you know, for all the all the previous explanations and try to not repeat some of the, of the parts of it. Um, I'm just explaining a little bit about ourselves. Uh, we are an uh, Amazon specialized agency. We're established in Spain and we got also offices in Latin America. And I'm the CEO. I'm gonna to try to provide some, uh, let's say, principal insights to maximize your strategy for Q4. And then I'm trying to provide an, an example, and then you can see how we perform it. Uh, we're going to try to first uh, tell you a little bit about the charging trends. Uh, second part, the effective part of the ad formats that we see that could be, uh, let's say, achievable or, or, or could be performing good on Q4. Then we're going to talk about a little bit about budget management and how to optimize it, bidding up optimization. Um, I'm sure, I mean, depending on sectors that you probably are here on live, are going to be much more applicable ones than other ones, uh, but I mean, just to have an overview some advanced advanced techniques and real-time campaign adjustments. And then we're gonna see a very simple case of a, a brand called Irisano here in Spain is a ham, uh, white ham uh, brand that's uh, performing the last uh, quarter on 2023. Uh, okay, so, I mean, uh, based about some of the things that we talk about and um, some of the mates talk about it on um, Trans or Q4, what are, in a, word, in a way, recommendations that we provide from, from the agency. Um, it's important to take into, uh, take into account the consumer behavior. Um, we are seeing some trends that some customers are anticipating uh, in previous uh, specific dates uh, rather than in Christmas dates, uh, purchasing of products due to maybe uh, finding uh, good offers on it. So it's important to take into about that maybe they could be uh, trying to purchase in previous uh, dates rather than other years uh, previously ago. So I would say uh, it's important to capture the attention on that side. Um, also take into account that depending on the Amazon country that you're selling on, um, you're having some impacts on the Cosmo positioning also. So in US, it's very important to try to understand what type of answers or what type of, uh, I mean, from the Rufus side or from the search side, is the algorithm of Amazon and also the advertising I'm gonna position my product. So these are just several parts of the catalog part, but it's also related also with the advertising. So it's important to take that into account on the trends. If I do not know, or I have no idea, but could be some part of uh, what kind of 
searches or questions that my customer could do on my product, we always suggest to try to do an A-B testing with IA to just bring on chat GPT or build a own GPT to try to learn about your product and then ask him questions about what kind of, uh, let's say, um, for chasing um, searches or, or type of questions could be related to your product. Also uh, important, again, uh, the budget allocation. Uh, I think it was uh, Elizabeth who told it. I mean, the historical data is brings a much more easy way to try to, let's say, forecast how can I, uh, how can behave the cost per clicks on Q4. Uh, maybe you got a new product that you don't have any idea of what could be the, the cost of it, but it's important to have, let's say, a more realistic view on it. And from that part, uh, we always try not to see the performance of the advertising, try to see it in a business mode, right? The performance of the uh, cost over returns of, of the cost of sales depend on three main variables, right? One of the average ticket price I got, the conversion rate I got, and the cost per click average I got. The, mo the formula is going to provide you the sales and therefore is going to provide you what's going to be the A cost uh, on forecast that you should have. The thing is that once you're getting track uh, about the campaigns and the performance of it. Am I going lower on ACOS or higher on ACOS? What is the cost of it? From a business mode, maybe I'm selling less mixed portfolio than I expected. Maybe I'm having a less conversion rate. All these things got to take into account because having a less conversion rate maybe is due to maybe you're not targeting the right audience, right? And you're targeting some audience that you're just bringing clicks and then you're not having any conversion on that. So important take into account that issue Long tail keywords are going to be essential ones. Uh, obviously, there's no, uh, not all the categories of the products are going to having a very extension long tail products. There are products that are maybe are new or are less well known by the consumer. And then you can have, a, let's say, less opportunities from the long tail directly side. So try to think about cross selling long tail keywords. They can also bring my product on or can be, let's say, attractive to be added to the card, I would say from, from that. And then important on that, the highly discount products, it's also important to leverage on that when sponsored products campaigns. I'll always, uh, we are, let's say, uh, educating customers all along the time and Amazon encourages that a lot to always finding deals. So having that combination related sometimes get much push forward towards the conversion rate and also from the click through rate because they see that is a is a good deal uh, at least from the from the front side of the product if we're going to talk let's say from an effective ad format that we see are going to be uh let's say get from the q4 i would say uh try to think about that we are on an environment which is the time is very valuable for customers it's very difficult to have a customer reading and having all that information about your product in a long time. I mean, a, long, uh, a lot of minutes there. So try to think about in a more real mode, uh, what, what we say. Try to think um, maybe how can I show uh, the products maybe or the explanations and the main KPIs on, let's say, in a one minute video, 40 seconds video. So sponsored brand video, sorry that I skip on the second first. Uh, I think it's very crucial on that. It's just not only doing the, the video by because you want to do it. Uh, you need to capture the att attention. It's essential. The first 15 seconds of the video are going to determine the impact that you're going to have on that customers and see that customers are willing to have a more detailed uh, read about your product or even add it to the cart. So important on that, try to encourage a lot test uh, maybe on you don't have a lot of creative way it's it's normal uh, try to see maybe your competitors how are they impacting on videos on inside Amazon or you can get out of Amazon look at TikTok look at Instagram try to find how to I can get this kind of videos uh, to have this kind of impact on the sponsored brands because as, as the other uh, other mates here on the webinar tell uh, cost per click and Q4 are very expensive are going to raise and even more if you're going to be pushing forward towards sponsored brands campaigns right so take it to that into account it's effective but it's, if it's produced effectively okay so uh Coming up on the sponsored brand spotlight, also we recommend this kind of uh, campaigns. It's a mar much more wider ones, but sometimes uh, you're not, let's say, uh, really uh, 
um, in a way thinking about which is going to be my product hero, for example, imagine that you're starting new products and you have no historical data. Sponsored Brand Spotlight brings your brand to life and the attractiveness to a whole part of your site and provides variety for the customers. So that is also another part that's interesting to bring that, let's say, awareness or first interest on senior products. Um, basically, in most parts, if they are new or it's a new line that you're in, that you're launching. Um, a sponsor that plays video, again, we are pushing very hard on this. Videos are going to be one of the good mm, performing parts in Q4, uh, but uh, again, good video. So mm, try to reach users who are likely to convert, targeting them. Try to think about all the audience that Amazon can provide you based on different kind of behaviors of customers that are maybe matching your brand identity or your branding products, right? Not try to guess and say, hey, I'm going to just add do an ad for products that have been or customers that have been made a review previously. You're targeting very wide. Uh, you're going to be spending your money probably in two days. Uh, we have seen cases on that. So try to think about it in a more much precise way, the segmentation, how to do it in a way that hey maybe i just find i don't know customers that are changing their 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 home living uh, recently one of the targets that you can do so important to to uh, also combine video but with a good targeting uh, in a more widespread audience um towards amazon for the budget strategies and try to focus on the bid optimization for for q4 here we bring three highlights try to anticipate the increase of cost per clicks. Again, if you got historical data, it's a very interesting moment to try to think on see which days are really the ones where really cost per clicks turns in a big high ratio. Um, so they're important to try to adjust the keywords that really you find your products with the best KPIs on the historical side and try not to bet on a massive on um, short tail keywords just by I got to be there because I know that there is my audience. Q4 in Amazon is a very creative part also for new brands. Uh, new brands are sometimes targeting some audience that are not even related to that keyword that you are thinking about and you can maybe see that your product should be the typical one to be there. So think about that all these cross-selling strategies are going to be bidding for this kind of keywords and obviously are going to impact your cost per click. Maybe it's not the time to try to get in that short tail keywords that you see that the were the ones that normally during the year are your audience in Q4 is going to be affecting higher on the span. Uh, automated budget rules prevent running out of funds. Uh, some of my mates told it, told it previously. Uh, again, important ones. Uh, we know and uh, all the brands are not having, let's say, unlimited budget. So adapt to your what is your budget and what kind of strategy can you be, can you be competitive on? Again, Amazon positions by products in a way is the main part of how they position. So if you're not competitive with all the budget for all of your catalog during Q4, try to prioritize in a way, which catalog can I really afford betting on it and betting really on a high impact in order to create impressions, right? Uh, again, time-based beat is the admin, in, very important on this. Try to guess, um, again, if you got historical data, it's important to have all this information tracked to see what are the best moments where the conversion rates uh, really uh, occur. So here, just examples. Uh, think about afternoons, evenings. Normally, during this period, are normally a very good moment to have a much more effective on it. It's common sense because maybe you're on work and then after uh, out of work, you got much more time or let's say um, in a way uh, to think and, and try to have the, the, the time to purchase the product. So it's going to be uh, impacting in a way your time effort on this campaigns, maybe out of hours. So I know it's not the funniest part of that, but in order to have a good performance on it, you got to take into that uh, into account also. Also, part of the advanced targeting techniques here from this side, uh, we bring some techniques that are, from our agency point of view, interesting to do on it. Sponsor displays remarketing this part. Uh, it's important to take into account that 
customers that have already touched your brand, it's a very interesting to try to figure out if I can touch them again on Q4, which maybe are they having much more willingness to shop, maybe have more budget on 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 that time to to spend. It's interesting to try to retarget them on with your brand again. Use your marketing windows. Normally, we, we tend to do seven to 14 days. Normally, we recommend to having a better impact on that. Interest-based targeting. Here, uh, again, try to guess what type of customers are the ones that purchase you on Amazon. It's not easy, but here's much more important. And now, even with Cosmo and Rufus, uh, it's even more important because reviews are not only going to position by the review itself, also the content that the review has. It's also crucial the, for a brand to try to understand what type of customers are purchasing my product in a way because it's going to give me some insights that then I can choose to how can I target on different type of customer behaviors on the Amazon display targeting. Product category segmentation, again, important. Uh, Try to figure out what type of segment ads uh, you're going to focus your products on which categories in a way um, and try to see uh, in which critical moments you see are the ones that are typical to show or highlight your products on this country uh, on this type of sponsored ad campaigns. And again, real time optimization, important boost the prime ads uh, placements. Q4 top search placements is crucial. I know it's something that's not new, but try to do some efforts on top placements that you are really betting on this kind of keywords that you see that could perform in a way for, for your products or for product pages, right? Again, not repeating for another part of some other mates that they told, negative keywords, essential ones. This is not just only for the keyword placements, also for understanding in a way um, the, um, how Amazon positions your product. Uh, so important in automatic campaigns, also cause more impacts in that in that way. So try to avoid having placements on some keywords that are not even related to your products. Here is also very related to the content side. So again, review all the product detail page of the listing that you see are the ones that could be the top sales ones and important to have the spends on the highest converting terms. Uh, again, I think it was uh, um, Elizabeth who show some keywords uh, play how to do it. So try to focus on that side. And again, try to do real time beat adjustments in the top previous days, top during the days, top after the day. So also take that in, into, into account. And then and just to bring a, a very brief view, how we focus on a case study of Aritano is a brand on the grocery side and in Spain, Q4 is one of the top uh, for uh, the, the the top um, demand for them is a very typical uh, demand for for ham ham products uh, for that side, and uh, from this project we achieve a two million impressions, nine thousand clicks through a highly optimized strategy, and the. You had a very good metrics there on the click through rate, conversion rate side, also on the advertising cost of sales during Q4 and the ROAS also. Uh, just to highlight here, um, we combine uh, very targeted campaigns, uh, very precise in some parts because this kind of products on the grocery part also has a very wide spread of accessories uh, that are related on this industry. So there are a lot of brands that are also betting on some keywords that maybe are not having the intention of purchasing just grocery. They're thinking much more having other kind of products there, maybe with other ticket price, and then they can afford maybe cost per clicks higher. So important to take that into account uh, in, in this kind of cases in, in this way, and also very uh, continuous bits optimization along the time. So just to share a brief overview, some parts here, so you can see some of the results on how we how we perform it on on that. And from that side, uh, as I said, I mean you can contact us by email on padegoglobal.com, or have you have also my contact on on email. So I'm open to have any questions that you have, you could have, or also at the end. Great, perfect. Yeah, we'll have like a Q and A session at the end. Perfect, Trevor, you're up next. Sorry, Trevor, can you hear us? Let me just check. Sorry. Okay, there we go. And it all off. Right, let me just...
Yeah, screen, there we go. Great. So I've just got some some quick tips to to share from our team from Q4. Um, first off, let's just consider what we're actually talking about here in Q4, um, the opportunities which are available. Um, firstly, Prime Day, we had that um, last week, so it's been and gone. Um, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So this year, it's the 29th of November is Black Friday and Cyber Monday is the 2nd of December. So traffic and sales tend to be highest on Black Friday um, and a second smaller peak occurs on Cyber Monday. Um, sales volume is lower on Cyber Monday than Black Friday and Saturday and Sunday tends to be lower than, than both Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, peak period is the 1st to 20th of December, so approximately 90% of sales in December occur between the 1st and the 21st, um, and sales typically um, decrease dramatically after the 21st of December, so you've just got that, that short window to, to sell in. Um, these years, um, the sales are starting earlier and earlier, and some product categories experience a second spike on, on Boxing Day. You have that, that Boxing Day is the, um, the day after Christmas Day. We call it Boxing Day in the UK. Um, and that's the 26th of December, and also um, the pre-January sales period between uh, Christmas and New Year. Um, so with any of these events, it's important to allocate a larger uh, portion of your budget to the first um, day of the event, um, as traffic and sales tend to peak at the beginning and then gradually decline from there on. Okay, so as ever, when you're running campaigns, it's important to have specific goals and benchmarks so you know how well you're doing. Um, so in this case, um, you could set yourself goals, for example, by um, increasing sales by a certain amount or increasing increasing your, your ACOS, um, your advertising cost of sale by a certain amount or boosting your market share in a particular category. Um, then there's a question of how do you benchmark performance? Um, and I think we've the others have talked a lot about looking at your, your previous performance data um, to establish your metrics, and you can do that from within your, your Amazon reports. So things to look at are your cost per click, um, your conversion rate, and also your total sales. Um, if you don't have enough data from previous Q4s, you can also look at similar events. Um, for example, the previous Prime Day, Summer Prime Day, um, to estimate the changes you can see in your key metrics. Um, to, um, you know, next, it's very important to, to think about how much you increase your budget. Um, and you can, you can do this by, you, know, you can forecast your total sales to establish um, that from your, your TACOS. Um, but you also need to be flexible um, because obviously everything is, is changing all the time in, in Q4. And so you need to be monitoring your, your performance um, really um, on a very, very regular basis, multiple times a day during your, your peak periods. Um, okay. So a, a key question really uh, during Q4 is whether you should have Q4 specific campaigns. Um, we believe that, that having specific campaigns helps to, you know, helps you define your budgets um, and keeps your, your seasonal targeting separate. Um, from your business as usual activity. Um, if you are creating uh, specific seasonal campaigns, you need to make sure this is done in advance, you know, because no one likes a rush. And also um, it takes campaigns a while to, you know, to collect data and to get going. And also, you know, you have uh, potential of Amazon content moderation to deal with. So you need to make sure you're, you're up and running in good time. So we found that uh, during Q4 sponsored product ads, um, have the best performance and you should um, allocate the um, majority of your budget to this type of campaign. Um, sponsored display ads tend to be less effective, but during key periods can be a useful to scale the um, traffic on key competitor product targets. And they also work well for brand defense strategies. That's bidding against your, your bidding for your own terms, your own brand. Um, Sponsored brands, um, again, are great for maintaining um, high visibility and the top of um, search share impression. Okay, just uh, talking about the kind of um, creative you can use um, during Q4. Um, both sponsored brands and sponsored display ads have the option to tailor headlines, and this can help to drive increased click-through rates with seasonal messaging. Um, 
Also, if you're running specific um, uh, Q4 deals, um, it's a great great strategy to create a specific uh, Christmas deals uh, page on your store and then use sponsored brand spotlight ads to drive traffic to that particular page. Oh, I've just got an example of someone with a specific um, uh, deal Christmas page, Christmas branding on this brand here. Okay, let's talk about uh, targeting in Q4. Um, a key question is whether you should use uh, seasonal keywords. For example, you should use you know, keywords like gift or Christmas. Um, now, these keywords tend to drive a significant amount of traffic, but the performance tends to be low. Um, so it's a good idea to add, uh, to add, gift, as a, add gift and similar keywords as negatives to your non-seasonal account to stop these bids, uh, stop these keywords from um, sucking up all your budget. Um, again, uh, separate campaigns with seasonal keywords allows you to take advantage of seasonal traffic boosts while maintaining control of your ad spend and performance. Um, you should assign a budget to your brand defense. Um, this um, basically this means that you you protect your brand and you you prevent your brand from being um, from losing um, customers to your um, competition who may well be bidding on your brand terms. Um, and also you need to um, be constantly adjusting your bids during this period. Um, during Q4, competition for, for ads and uh, well, for competition increases and therefore cost per click increases. Um, this means if you don't adjust accordingly, you'll miss out on opportunities to maximize your sales. Finally, I'd just like to talk a bit about uh, automation during Q4. Um, the during Q4, you should use automation to ensure your campaigns um, make the most out of the expe expected increases in traffic sales. Um, and so the key things you want to automate are your budget allocation to make sure that your key campaigns don't run out of the budget, um, your bidding, and also to set up um, goal-based bidding. So um, in terms of budget rules, schedule increasing budget on the best performing campaigns to ensure your campaigns are never out of budget. Um, for bidding, um, calculate your maximum cost per click based on the conversion rate and average order value to understand how much you can bid. Um, you should be using day parting, as in bidding um, different times of the day, um, to understand um, when you should, um, you know, when your clicks and sales take place, and to bid uh, differentially according to the performance of your of your campaigns. Um, you should expect that your conversion rate will be higher in Q4, and that means your, your maximum um, cost per click can be higher than usual. Um, finally, goal-based bidding. Um, it's good to check uh, with your software provider um, how best to manage your goals during seasonal events um, and how to set those goals. I mean, one key thing to take into consideration is whether your software provider takes um, seasonality into account when it's um, in its bidding algorithms. Okay, because I'm last, that's short and sweet. Uh, just very quickly about us. We are, as I said previously, a direct-to-consumer um, e-commerce specialist. Um, and uh, I've just got my, my details there. Please uh, contact me with my email. Um, and also there's my um, LinkedIn um, profile. Perfect. Thanks very much. Perfect. Thank you so much. So we do have some questions um, for you guys. So the first question over here is for Jungler, for Elizabeth. Um, and it says, what are the key metrics I should focus on during Q4 to ensure my campaigns are driving both sales and profitability? Mm, good question. Um, I would say primarily, again, it's that ad spend versus total sales balance. Um, so you want to make sure a cost is going to be a huge one, but I think above that is going to be total a cost. If you have a way to track total a cost on a listing level at scale, that is going to be the most effective way to do it. Again, we, it's not just, uh, is the account profitable, but are all of my pro products profitable? And then if they're not, I want to know why, and then make sure you're adjusting ads according to that. Perfect. So for Amazoniac. Um, someone's asking, how should brands prioritize their budgets between sponsored products, sponsored brand, and sponsored display to maximize their impact in Q4? Hey. Uh, so, Have your um, screen share still open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so how to how to um, allocate the budget? I mentioned in the presentation that the best way is if you want to go on a budget, sponsored products is, is the way to go. Sponsored product campaigns are usually um, have, have the lowest um, cost. Uh, and these campaigns are basically um, bottom of the funnel. So they, they are the key drivers to the conversions. Um, if budget allows it, sponsored display is a great way to maybe reach retargeting. So uh, customers that already viewed your product or maybe are searching for similar products. This is also a great way to, to implement. Uh, Spark display campaigns are more expensive. So usually we see like up to 10% of the, of the total uh, budget allocation. And sponsor brands, uh, usually uh, what we see is somewhere around 15% of the total budget allocation goes towards the video campaign, the mainly video campaigns. There are some other types as well. The video is super, um, can be super, super uh, nice to, to have in terms of visibility, in terms of sales as well. Um, but yes, if you want to, um, if you are on a super tight budget, sponsored product um, campaigns are the ones to, to go with allocate the most, uh, the largest portion of the budget towards those type campaigns. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Javier, someone's asking you how to best utilize uh, sponsored display retargeting uh, during this period. Uh, I mean, the thing is that we need to understand our customer and need to find out what type of behaviors or based on Amazon segments could be the ones that are suitable on that. Obviously, you're going to do some tests, same as you do on your product listing on, on advertising, but I would suggest to try to find some parts of customers that you understand them better, right? Uh, maybe you will have other customers that you don't even know currently now how they are, but I would suggest that at least mm, remarketing is a good action, but I mean, combined with that, try to segment on Q4 based on true experience, right? Uh, during Q1, Q2, Q3, you can test some new audience and trying to figure out if that audience were were worthy or or not. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, Trevor, someone's asking you, um, what is the peak sales period within Q4? Um, oh, the key, peak sales. I mean, from experience, I mean, we, I used to run my own e-commerce business, so we always used to find that the the um, it's the the of Cyber Monday, and then the, just the, the period just before um, uh, the 20th, you know, it's kind of the very last few days before Christmas is the absolute peak period. Yeah, nice. Uh, last question was for me. It was asking uh, what should we keep an eye out for in terms of like the software tool we're running or the settings we have on the software uh, during and before Q4. So I think the first thing you want to look at are the budget constraints that you have. So a lot of you guys might have certain budgets set up within your tool and you want to be sure to adjust those before Q4 uh, to account for any increase in sales or any increase in uh, you know spend that's going to happen during this period naturally because of the higher volume. Uh, so you want to make sure the budgets are set up properly. If you have certain maximum bids, you want to maybe revisit those at least on your key keywords and key campaigns. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the right campaign set up within the tool, right? Um, some softwares allow you to set up like different modes. Uh, so you have like a lower ad cost mode and increased sales mode. So you wanna make sure that these are set up properly because with some tools, there are certain modes where they don't do any bid increases. So if you have your campaigns on these modes, uh, you guys are obviously gonna have trouble in Q4 if you're only doing decreases. So I wanna make sure all of the deflationary settings uh, are not exaggerated. Uh, and maybe you can decrease the, I guess, effect or the aggressiveness of these deflationary settings uh, prior to Q4 or prior at least to the main sales period. So thank you for to make sure that you're going to make the most out of Q4. Uh, you want to make sure with your software provider that the seasonality is taken into account or else you might have, you know, um, you might have bids not increased before. Uh, Q4 happens or you're not, you might have the campaigns not be optimized properly before the actual peak sales periods. And then once the sales period is over, your software could retrospectively 
look at the data from those peak sales periods and try to increase bids again after, right? So you want to make sure that you're optimized before and after. And also, Trevor, your screen's still open. Um, so if you could just switch that off for us. Um, so if you you want to make sure that before and after uh, Q4, everything's set up properly. Trevor, do you want to just switch screen share off for me? Hi, sorry. Here we go. I just switched it off from my set. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you all for joining and for listening to us and for everyone who's presented. Thank you. Um, all of your presentations were great. And this recording will be up on YouTube probably either today or tomorrow. So if you guys want to watch this again or share it with the team, uh, you can just head to AI Hello's YouTube channel. Thank you everyone again, and we'll see each other again soon. See you guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.